CGP. Cleveland Gaming Podcast. Video games, culture, anime, toys, pinball, tabletop. CGP. Cleveland Gaming Podcast. Here we go. CGP. This is the Cleveland Gaming Podcast. CGP. Time to press start. What's up, fellow gamers, nerds, and everyone else on the video game sphere in between? You're listening to the Cleveland Gaming Podcast, the best video game podcast in all the land, the Cleveland. My name is Corey. I am the program director, host of the show, and MC of the main stage for the Cleveland Gaming Classic. And joining me, as always, is number one on the leaderboard for the Cleveland Gaming Classic, and that is Mr. Tom Jenkins. Tom, you are looking suave, smooth, and one might even say pretty? Pretty. That's going to be a good theme tonight. But I was more concerned. Do you feel like anyone could audit if we're the best podcast in Cleveland? Best video game podcast in the land. Oh, right. Sorry. I meant to say best video game podcast in the land. I I am willing to put ours up against all of them. And if they want to collaborate to give us more views likes and analytics i would take it in any kind of challenge sense what's your, what's your gut on how many video game podcasts there are, are in cleveland 17 17 that's a strong number i would have been lower i would have been well, actually that seems directionally accurate i'll i'll back you on that i was gonna be closer to 10 regardless you know i know we've got a pretty packed agenda so what do you think i think that is a very astute thing to say before we get into the topic today a few reminders this show is brought to you by all of you listening your ear holes your hearts and your souls thank you for tuning in and make sure to follow us on all the socials facebook instagram and tiktok cleveland gaming classic and of course visit our website gamecleveland.com the show is september 20th through the 22nd and we're leading it all up with fun stuff like the show today because we are about to make a top five list with one of our extraordinary artists at the Cleveland Gaming Classic. Tom, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's jump in. Let's get right into it. Let's go. I'm jumping. I'm leaping. I'm diving. Do you guys remember back in the day when Siskel and Ebert, they claimed that video games weren't art? Oh, yeah, I think so. It's a perfect example of boomer art. Like, did people just not seeing the full scope of it? I dare them. I dare them to play through Final Fantasy X and not sob like a little baby like I did. Where would that have come up? Like, I'm just curious about the context of that. Like, I don't know where it was. Maybe, Ian, if, I don't know if you remember, but I do recall very strictly in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, I think it had to do maybe with some of the video game movies that came out around That's that time. That's what I was going to say. Was I, they were claiming that video that. games weren't art. Did they, right? was, did they just watch the Mario Brothers movie and that just came up? <laughs> I mean, you know, in all seriousness, I mean, I feel like I would defend them in that case. Yeah, I think, I mean, that was kind of, uh, <laughs> that one might have been almost an assault on art, but... <laughs> <laughs> the, I will say the, the Super Mario Brothers movie was an assault to my sen- senses. However, even things, some of those movies, those really, really bad video game movies from the uh, 90s gave some of my favorite one-liner meme-worthy moments of all time. Well, what's your name? Mario. Last name. Mario. What's your name? Luigi. Last name. Mario. Wait, so how many Mario's there between the two of you? Three, obviously. Come on. <laughs> I actually don't remember that. I'm going to go back and watch this awful movie again. I just No, don't do it. The... No, run. Oh, don't do it. Oh, no, don't do it. Dater-looking Bowser. I just, that's all I remember from that movie. And the really bad uh, mustache and all the really kind of... It was living the final throes of the 80s post-apocalyptic era. I think at that point we realized, oh, sorry, 80s, you're done now. You had your time. You got a few years. But deep thought here. Is it is it art because we remember it being what it is? Maybe? Is I mean, because it's so bad, it's so good that we remember it and we remember the art style and the costumes and everything. I'll give this to you because one of my favorite quotes about art, someone said, and I forgot the actual original uh, person, so I do apologize for that. But the quote is, good art is meant to 
disturb the comfortable and mm. comfort the disturbed. Yes, I do remember that quote. I, I live by the, the pathos that anything that makes you think about something deeper than what it is, that to me is art. And it doesn't have to necessarily be within a bounds of what we expect art to be. Like if you showed me stills from the Super Mario Brothers movie, I would not think that was art, but it still makes me think to this day. So it's something. Yeah, right. And someone created those costumes, which was art and built those whatever you did all the set pieces everything right so and it's it's an art that bob hoskins got through that filming because i heard that he was, he was drunk drinking his right. mind the entire process <laughs> so it was an art just to i think remember those lines or get up in the morning but you know what is artful our guest in this week's episode what a segue uh, all our friends of CGP, the Cleveland Gaming Podcast, uh, let's give a big welcome to one of our great vendors, uh, an amazing artist. Uh, it's Mr. Ian Moss. What's up, sir? How you doing? Doing great. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for uh, the sweet welcome. And I'm actually really glad this is not video because I'd feel really intimidating doing a podcast with two amazing looking guys. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, he's on the wrong podcast, clearly. <laughs> I think America's Best might need to get an appointment ready for you to get some new prescription on those glasses, sir. <laughs> Flattery aside, you know, we brought you here for a particular reason because as we were talking about video games being art, I think that it's good for us to look at some artistry inside of video games. And today, we're going to come up with the Cleveland Gaming Podcast Top 5 Prettiest Games of All Time. And we had to invite one of our top art vendors to join us here but before we dive into all those things i think it's important for us to get to know a little bit more about you ian and everyone we bring onto the show the question we have to start by asking is what are you playing right now what video game is loaded into your console uh app running in the background on your phone tell us that's probably the most important question you could ask anyone really especially when you're putting on an amazing com like cleveland gaming classics so uh, honestly, what is in the back burner of my, uh, oh, I forgot the name of the program now, Steam. <laughs> that was awful. Uh, <laughs> Gate 3, of course. Uh, I got it back last year, but I'm so busy with art, I haven't even made it past the first chapter. So, I'm in, like, the first island part of Baldur's Gate 3 still, <laughs> almost half a year later. Well, it's more than I've played. I've wanted to download it, but I've been scared to because I have the show to run. And I fear that if I would download it, Corey would probably text me, email me, and call me. And we would not make a lot of progress on things. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, and it gets harder if you've got a lot of friends who play it because I've had several friends that wanted me to play and I've restarted the game probably five or six different times, which doesn't help my case. I have to say Baldur's Gate 3 is a game I'm fearful of getting into. I almost think sometimes, Tom, that we run a retro video game convention because at least retro video games have a finite endpoint that doesn't mm. exceed 100 hours of playtime. I can play a game of Galica in five minutes, probably less on a bad day, or if I've had too many Jack and Cokes. Wait, I know you guys are asking the questions, but can I throw one out there? Go on. Top... I mean, you did suck up at the beginning, so we'll allow you yes. one. It's Top we'll allow favorite it. SNES game. Get one. If you could only play I already, one. I already got mine. I'm ready. Go, yeah. Tom. Mine's always linked to the past. Yes! The SNES. I mean, that's, that's up there, so easy I, I like the choice i think it is i think that is the best zelda game of all time as it mm -hmm. changed oh. the formula and really ascended the game I, ocarina is the most important majora's mask to me is my favorite however i if we're going to go in the world of rpgs which i think the snes is maybe it's truly defined by some of its best rpgs of all time i i can make an easy choice like final fantasy 3 or chrono trigger but i'm gonna go with the game that changed my gaming life and that's super mario rpg legend of the seven stars that game means a whole heck of a lot to me, from music to art direction, to an easy accessible RPG experience with timed button press commands that lets like the enfranchised Mario player feel like they have some agency. I think the game was just a watershed moment. Oh yeah. 
I agree. That was a good game. But yeah, mine's only the pass as well, still. Though. <laughs> My other backup, because, well, Corey knows us because we travel. Like, I always play uh, Tetris Attack, too. Tetris Attack was always my game on the SNES as well. So Nice. Ian, before we get into our top five list here, uh, I think it, uh, we should really get a little bit of establishment of what your origin story is. Any good hero has to have a good origin story, and you are an artist at various conventions, like the Cleveland Gaming Classic, retro mm -hmm. video games. So can you tell us where are your origins from? Like, wh where did you decide to go and take artistry, integrate it with different pop culture, video game things, nerd IPs? Where did it all come from? Tell us your origin story. Absolutely. So uh, I'm a SoCal kid of the 80s and 90s, and as any good SoCal kid of the 80s and 90s and not having a lot of country to play in, I uh, spent a lot of time watching movies and playing video games with my friends and reading comic books and just loved art. And without getting too much into uh, like a lot of good origin stories, I kind of have a little bit of a tragic past, but we'll save that for another time. Anyways, the way I got through it was through art and creating. So drew and painted every day. Uh, went to Columbus College of Art and Design and uh, learned from some of the best in the industry there. Uh, and I've always been inspired by fantasy artists and guys like Boris Vallejo, Frank Pozzetta, and current ones more like Daniel Dos or Dan Dos Santos. So uh, just kind of applying cool art and art history to some of my favorite game characters and different pop culture and nerd IP. That's cool. Where were you? Where were you from in, in Southern California? I lived out there for a stint too. So you know, this is why we have a connection. You know, I feel like nice. we're, we're learning this for the first time. Where were you? Where were you at? So uh, I grew up in West LA. Um, okay. Um, and I had family in Anaheim and Brentwood. So. All right. Cool. Yeah, I was out there for a couple of years. We were down in Newport Beach, but yeah, the same yes. thing is we were in Newport, we're at Huntington. I surfed a total of three times and sucked terribly at it and then moved back to Cleveland. That's great. You guys my grandma it. had a house in Newport and we me and my wife actually spent a lot of time in Laguna too. I love the area of the art scene there. Yeah. That was the, the the downtown art area. Yeah. That's yeah. where I proposed my wife at was there. Really? Yeah. True That's story. awesome, man. There were some homeless people on the beach smoking cigarettes. She'll tell you the story at the show. <laughs> you, could see, you could see you, you could see their cigarettes lit up as I was proposing. We still Tom, talk I about knew it. from the moment I met you that you would be a hopeless romantic and it just it came true. <laughs> I just love that this is all happening. And this is cool, right? I mean this is it's funny that Ian and I have that connection. That's cool. It's a really it cool connection. I can never claim that I lived in California. I grew up in Wisconsin. I just looked like a really bad surfer and I just have the haircut to prove it. But what you gonna do? Uh, I know that Ian, you do a lot of commission work as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously people going to conventions or finding your websites. I kind of want to know just, have you ever had a really strange ask or commission? Something that you're like, uh, yes this is gonna push my line that I drew in the sand. So I, what's funny is I'm weird enough that I think some of my own ideas do that to me. Uh, my friends who know me really well say I don't just cross the line. I'm like, I sprint over the line. You're a habitual uh, line stepper, habitual. I'm a, dude, I'm a habitual line dancer. Like I, I dance back and forth, you know? Uh, I bet you do a mean wobble. I can at least give you some of my most fun recent ones. I get so many requests that's hard to keep track of. Uh, sure. And ADHD, ADHD brain kind of fries it, especially when you have a ton of comms. But, so I'm going to do a little shameless plug here. I, uh, I have my own Twitch art stream, and uh, I also have a Kofi. So I do this thing on my Tier 3 Kofi subs that they actually, I call it Bardic Inspiration. And once a month, they get to tell me what to draw for 30 to 45 minutes. I was joking about, everyone knows the Ian Malcolm shot where he's got his shirt unbuttoned and he's like leaning back. Uh, uh, no, can you explain it in, in nope. uh, a little nope, bit more Tom detail, Ian? I nope, actually Tom, have never seen up. this photo. Yeah, so, look it up. What is the shot, shot you're talking about? Can you go into a lot of detail? Nope. A lot of detail for our viewers. We're good, we're good. 
Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> they need the graphic details. They don't. I, I, Listen, I just want to see if how. They, if I just they want to see how. have a narrated Chuck Tingle audio exotic book, they can go there if they want to. <laughs> I'm just curious how far Ian can take this to give a. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming this is a family friendly stream, so I won't. Uh, I won't get into too much detail other than I like to call him Ian Malcolm. So, uh, anyways. I've been joking about doing an Ian Malcolm uh, painting or sketch for like six months, and one of my fans was finally like, "You know what? I'm gonna make you do it. Like, this is it. You're you're doing it today. You're gonna spend 30 to 45 minutes and draw me Ian Malcolm." I start sketching this live on Twitch, and I I give, do him in his sexy pose, but I give him a T-Rex head, and he's wink. He's kind of got giving you this like, "Come hither, like, hey baby." look but he's got a t-rex head and you can actually find the sketch on my instagram so that was a fun one and then for may the 4th last year i gave the entire stream control where they just got to tell me and i was just doing quick sketches however long they took what was it i did i got requested to do a seductive wookie and my favorite weird one c-3po in a slave leia outfit so I'm like, Unfortunately, I can picture all of those things very clearly right now. I know, um, right? right? I've it's seen, weird. I've seen right? enough of the Star Wars holiday special as well that I, I understand the seductive Wookiee situation. I get it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not caught off guard by that. I do want to say, Tom, though, you digging deeper into this whole Ian Malcolm thing, you, sir, are the chaos theory. It's you. You <laughs> did it. Embrace it. Go. Yeah, go man. I'm, I'm excited to join Ian's next live stream. <laughs> Clearly, I, I think you're excited about it. I'm going to put you on the spot, Ian. If I were to send a commission to you and I were to ask you to put Tom into a body face of something video game or nerd wise related, what does your artistic bardic vision say? Like, what would you do mm. for the final boss, Tom Jenkins? Ian, before you answer, this, like a final boss, right? He's the final boss. Well, he, his moniker is the final boss. That is oh. what he's known as. All right. Ian, also, Ian, just well, known as the, on, the most on. important before, person in the show. Before, before Ian, before you answer this, Ian, just know that I have the right to deny any application, exhibitor or otherwise, for the show. I, I think Ian, don't worry about it. He's not going to deny you because we definitely need to keep our vendors happy. <laughs> I, I'd be actually really tempted to try to knock this out for Cleveland Gaming Classic if I didn't have so much going on. So uh, Final Fantasy VII was one of my favorite PlayStation games, right? So oh. we're, we're going to go back a little retro. And when we all know Sephiroth. I'm thinking Tom Jenkins. Remember Sephiroth in that one really weird shot where he's pretty much not wearing anything and he's got the longest hair under his belly that you've ever seen. I think we got a long hair uh, Tom that's uh, covered up with uh, some extra long hair in some places and then we'll, we'll throw in the uh, Genosha or the Genova uh, wing and maybe a little cool halo on top of it. How's that sound? I would just be happy with some hair. I knew, I knew you were going to say that, Tom. I, I mean, I, I lean into it, right? I, I hope that wasn't too uh, on the line. <laughs> My abs are chiseled just like Sephiroth, so if you, you oh, know, just missing the hair, if you will. But I appreciate that, Ian. <laughs> well, folks, the past, we didn't have that image in our head, but now we're in the present, and it is actively alive for us. And I guess because we're talking about the prettiest things, we can think about Tom a Sephiroth in adjacent to that, because we're going to talk and we're together going to make the top five prettiest video game list of all time. Now, there's yeah. three of us and there's five slots, and this is how this is going to go. Uh, I've got all three of us assigned different slots in our top five list. We're going to take uh, turns assigning different pretty games to those slots from five to one. Now, of course, we're not going to be quiet when someone else has their pick. We can talk, we can discuss, we can open up the conversation and, you know, try to lay down on what exactly the top five prettiest games of all time are going to be. But in the end, the person who has the pick puts it on there. We're going to see if we can get a list that looks somewhat like what would be the top five prettiest games of all time list. But we have to work together while also trying to see if we can sync up on some of these things as... I still have naked 
Ian Malcolm and Naked Tom <laughs> Sephiroth in my mind, so I might be out of sync, but here we are today. Record, uh, Ian Malcolm was wearing pants. It's <laughs> shirtless. <laughs> Shirt. I've still got the C-3PO image in my head. <laughs> this, this literally took a weird turn. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. If only every week was it like this. If only. <laughs> So we've got the five slots laid out here. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to give a person a pick. We got to start with pick number five, going to one. Pick five, we're going to start with the final boss because I'm going to put him on the spot. Tom, you get pick five. Four goes to Ian. I'm going to take the third pick. Going back to you, Tom, for number two. Number one with Ian. Now, remember, we got to make sure that these are going in the right places, too. So yeah. it... So it's not just necessarily, let's just pick five, pie of five pretty games there. We have to make sure that if we have a, a game in our head, we can't put it above another one that we already put there. So I'm glad I'm glad you clarified this, because that was one of my questions. Are these yeah. in, once it, in, in once it's order? there, it's there. Like it's, but it's OK. It, All right. The oh, order is important. Can't we can't move them. This oh. is not some kind of like shuffle nuffle no, 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 no Cleveland shuffle, if you will. No Cleveland. Thank you, Tom. There's no Cleveland I mean, shuffle in here. Can we do the truffle shuffle instead? You're welcome to. This is a videoless podcast. You can truffle yeah, shuffle as much as you want. It's probably good for everybody. <laughs> He's actually doing the truffle shuffle, folks. It's awesome. It was something. <laughs> I, I worked in Astoria, the setting and filming location of the Goonies. So I'm very familiar with the truffle shuffle. And, when, and, when Corey says, and when Corey says he was doing, it was not me. For, for <laughs> It was not me. That was Ian. So. I mean, no, you've got the six-pack abs. You've already said, Tom. Truffle shuffle no, just doesn't I mean, work. Well, yeah, no, I'm good. I, tried, I treated my six-pack for a keg a long time ago. <laughs> That's how pretty much all Wisconsinites operate. Anyway, top five list, folks. So, like I said, order order matters. we got to put these together. By definition of pretty, it's kind of subjective, right? But what games we think are the most aesthetically appealing? I would encourage us not to just think about what 3D game looks the best and thinking about console graphic generations. We are a retro video game show, so I think we are welcome to kind of also go into the annals of, you know, what game in the 8-bit or 16-bit era really exceeded expectations. I think those are all welcome considerations. But the driving conversation starts with the person who has the pick. So the fifth pick of this list, uh, number five in the top five list, I'm going to start off with Tom. Tom, not number one through four, but still deserves recognition on this list. What do you think would fit into five? What are your thoughts right now? I, I've got a couple ideas what would be good picks for this list. I'm going to go with one that's maybe a little unorthodox. We'll see how you guys react to this. But Do you have any so, options, or is it just this one you're thinking? No, I've got some options, but I feel like the other ones may be just safer. Um, I'm also um, trying to think more... Maybe a little bit more retro too. I feel like is picking like newer games. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm sure we'll talk about some newer games here as part of this. But sure. you know, for the time and for the art style and what it was, you know, things that just immediately came to mind and remember and still stay with me today. So are you ready for my pick? Did I build it up? Built it up like a brick house, man. That did. All right. So brick house. All right. Um. So I'm gonna go with Katamari Damacy. I don't know how to say the is it Domasi or Damasi, but Katamari Damasi. Interesting um, pick. I like it. it right? But it's, it's it's clever. I thank you, I guess. Ian, yeah, do you, you know should. this game? Do you know this I game, Ian? I don't. I don't I don't know this one. So it's very unique. It's probably more known for its music than it is for its art style, but I would say artistically. Like, it's a game that its visuals are very rememberable. And it's just super colorful, super fun, very clean. Uh, PlayStation game. I think it was PlayStation or PlayStation I think it started 2. PS2. It was and, PlayStation and there's 2? been yeah. a ton of iterations from it. Yeah, it's I a, mean, it... you would recognize, like, the, um, what is it, the, the prints and a lot of the iconography from the game, which I feel like, you know, still... It is amazing today to look at. The art style is just very fun, colorful. I don't know how to describe it. It's just very hmm. unique, too. Okay. Tom, I don't I don't mind the, the choice. Also, the whole game mechanic of you have a large ball, Ian, called a Katamari, and okay. your idea is like it rolls around and things stick to it. And as it sticks to it, the ball gets larger, which then allows you to get larger things. Eventually, you can like collect buildings and 
your goal is for the Katamari to roll and get as big as you possibly can. It was definitely a Japan import, but it had such charm and aesthetics. And I don't want to like spoil right now, but I think your pick kind of aligns with where I want to go in my slot. So I'm curious to see if we're going to go to the same vibe, Tom. And I, you know, so to piggyback on what you said, I, that was part of the other reason why I picked it. I feel like the art style of that game, you know, you have to play it and see it almost to believe it. Cause like, as, as you start small, everything starts and is drawn in proportion to the yeah proportion whatever good points right and it is as things keep getting bigger and bigger the objects get smaller and smaller where you become this massive eventually like you're knocking over buildings and you know cruise ships and it's just unbelievable so i feel like that art style just the, even the ability to scale with that was something really cool for the time mm -hmm. and it's still super fun today and for someone to even think up this idea is just wild but yeah very pretty game, I like it. It's a little off edge. I think it kind of slots really nicely into a number five pick. It, it's it got so many memorable things about it that just makes the whole package seem so refined and unique. That I, I like that as five, Tom. I think it really sits well. Thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully I get a raise. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and go over uh, to the fourth pick. Uh, Ian, so we, we talked about a Japan import in Katamari. Mm -hmm. So now we gotta think about what's number four. So yeah, I know you don't know much about Katamari Damacy, but it, it's got a, we, we theoretically have to make one that's better than it. Yeah. But obviously art is subjective. Okay. What, do, what do you have in mind? It's not quite at the bottom of the list, but still quite strong. Can't be number one. Right. What are you thinking? So I have two ideas for my one and two, so I don't want to get into those, and they are more modern. So let's, let's, let's take a journey into the past. Let's hop into our TARDIS or our DeLoreans and try not to crash them into each other and see what happens. So you went PS2, right? So I'm actually gonna probably, I think it might've been a little bit before it. I could be wrong, you guys could correct me. I think I'm leaning. Let's go Ocarina at a time, maybe. Oh, I do not mind that pick, especially as the era of 3D gaming, right? Yeah. That, was, that was the cusp. So we've got 3D games coming out, and you know, for every Super Mario 64, we have a Superman 64. Graphically, right. it's it's blocky. It is what it is. I'll give this to you. Ocarina of Time has such a distinct style, and mm -hmm. I think it it does have a nice kind of aesthetic sense. I don't mind the pick. I don't mind the pick. I will say, you made my number three a little bit easier. I think now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for me, what made it was I'm a big forest, woods, and mountain guy. So there's tons of that in there, obviously, and then the whole like elf feel of Zelda. But the character designs were just really cool and unique. I felt like for the time too. So and revolutionary. No yeah. one knew what 3D characters were supposed to look like. I can still remember, say the the Gerudo gang or oh, the Zoras right? yeah. or. Yeah, any of those things, I, they are defined. They they took polygons and they shaped it in a way and used color palleting, I think, very clever. Uh, also, great Deku tree. Oh, I mean, yeah. how, how do you forget about the scale and just, I think, so, like the earth tones of the mm -hmm. great Deku tree? What a great pick. I like it. I like it. Thanks. Well, you said you had some <laughs> other ideas. Uh, are you saving that for, your, for the number one on our list here? What, that one? No, it sounds like you had another idea. Oh, Are yeah, you yeah. The other ones saving I'm that for a little bit later towards, on, yeah? Yeah, the other ones I'm leaning towards number one, because they're definitely prettier, but it's also done with modern technology, so sure, it kind of gives an advantage. But I, I kind of like, I kind of hate, like, it's one of those aesthetically pleasing because of how realistic it looks like, and you probably have an idea of what I'm going with, but I think just from an artistic standpoint, man... Maybe maybe I placed this one too low, but it is in the top four, and we're not going with the top ten or twenty. So, I kind of I kind of like it at four. I think both Katamari and Ocarina, they're great games, and they're definitely part of a full package. Both games I think are notable in different ways, yeah. and they together make up an entire experience. 
But I think neither of them, like, would I stand by and wave the flag and say this, like, they are definably the best art game of all time. I oh, wouldn't, yeah. but I do think that they fit well in the storytelling of it all. So I don't mind either of them. Uh, I'm going to go to number three. This is mine uh, on number three. I wanted to start off by making the semi-controversial pick because when The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker was announced, everyone raged quit, right? Because they had the the Game Developers Conference and they showed the, the big 3D GameCube sprites of mm -hmm. Ganondorf and Link fighting out. And everyone was like, we want that, that I want. And then we got Wind Waker. And I was like, what? I think the remake of Wind Waker showed to everyone that art styling like that is timeless. Remake it, or the original Wind Waker? I think both of them are timeless okay. now. When you look at either the, the remake or if you go back and play the GameCube, both of them still hold up very strongly. And I think because of the art styling that they decided to go with with Wind Waker, I still look at that and think this, this looks modern. It yeah. looks slick. It doesn't look like a product of its time. I And I wanted to bring that for Wind Waker, but when you took Ocarina, I don't think we can put another Zelda game on this list. Yeah. I, I oh, so you're so. not you're not picking that for your third. Yeah. I'm not picking Wind Waker. I think when you started talking about Wind Waker, the, the thing that I remembered the most out of it was kind of their Bill Coblin uh, character designs, but there was a really cool, with their quote effects, right? Like the way they stylized smoke and clouds with this mm -hmm. kind of like Kennedy water effects style, too. With water ripples color. were great. Yeah, that. Oh man. Like, do I put that above Ocarina? But I still think Ocarina, for its time, was probably more groundbreaking. I think you could make that argument with the 3D-ness of it all and yeah. taking the sprites. I feel uh, like Wind Waker would have been a good third, though, but that's why I was asking if you're picking it or not. I mean, I feel like it's that's... An, I can't. I don't... I don't really? Think... If we're making a on, list... On what, just... on, what, on what principle? Just Yeah, I think representation. I, I think Zelda's great. I would never classify Zelda as an art design-specific game. If I were to pick one... If I had your slot, Ian, I probably would have taken Wind Waker, but I just don't want to give another Zelda title on the top five of the list. So it's I'm going to go. It's funny, though. Yeah, that's funny because, yeah. you know, because I was even thinking the same thing we started this. I'm like, we were talking about uh, Link to the Past. I mean, even Link to the Past, I mean, that's, I mean, we could, it did, three it, games, it, three it, games it did right there. It did great for the colors. Right. It did great for the colors. Right. Well, Color was amazing. down by the system. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, there's a whole a whole another thing for system breakdown for sure. Um, I so but to my pick, uh, I want to stay in that generation. So the GameCube generation, the Xbox generation, I'm gonna go with a PS2 game, uh, and I think that this is another one that the watercolor aesthetic and the focus on art as a part of combat, as part of game oh. mechanic, and then also just looks great because it was you're filling color into the world. Okami. I don't know if anyone knows Okami, but it was it, it was a Clover Studio game. Is that the game dog? This, You're like a it's the dog, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. it's the dog one. So you play as a dog that's basically bringing color back to the world, and the whole style is watercolor. And Ooh. to me, I look back on that game, and it still holds up. It's it, I, I guess maybe I'm a sucker for big lines. If any game has, like, big, solid, strong lines and has this, like, anime's, like, refined art style, I'll still be on board for it. And I think Okami not only integrated art as part of its game mechanics, but was still just a gorgeous game. And I would still happily sit down and play it, and I wouldn't think any less of the graphic capabilities of the PS2. Also, PS2 is probably one of the best systems of all time. But I think Okami stands on its own, and I'm going to give it number three, and I'm very happy to take it there. Honestly, I'm kind of happy that you took ocarina ian so i don't have to worry about getting a zelda game on here so done so there's definitely Locked some in. similarity though between that and wind waker though so, okami very so, much so very right. much so yeah, that's why like i want this, that's why i wanted one of those water, two on the list watercolor type but it still has like the shaded i'm not an artist i don't know what i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to look yeah. this one up because it sounds cool. like the shading in it is very similar i remember yeah yeah it's downloadable on the switch so you could look it up on the switch Ooh. and download it if you have if you have a switch ian it it's good it's a good game it's a it's a platformer that uses watercolors i i i'm not gonna get too much into it but i think it's definitely worthy of your time let's go to number two and to refresh everyone our list right now looks like we have katamari damasi at number five picked by tom we've got ocarina 
at number four. I picked Okami at number three. So now we're down to the top two best looking games of all time. And Tom, I, I would love for you to bring up the game that we talked about because I really seriously thought about talking about that at number three. Oh, you're talking about Nintendo Dogs? No, I was not talking about Nintendo Dogs. Yeah, that's what you were talking about before the show. You're debating nope. between you knew but these two dog oriented games. It was Okami or Nintendo Dogs. I was like, Corey. Nope. You gotta go with Nintendo Dogs. <laughs> no, Ian, I'm this is all true. Face of caution, this is, man. This is all true, Ian. <laughs> uh, no. All right, so this is my pick. Yeah. up. All right, so this is tough. And I don't know if I changed my mind or not, Corey, but I, I kind of. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go with my gut on this one. Do it. I'm gonna go with Red Dead Two. <laughs> uh, number one what? big fan of the game fantastic um and it's just there's so much to obviously it's a whatever rock star game so much going on but yeah. just the visuals in the game everything from the atmospheres everything it's just Bro, sunsets 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 oh, yeah. right that's yeah, all you have to just, say just the yep. views and how much i mean <laughs> right you, you wouldn't expect anything less but uh yeah, so. you actually took one of my ideas for slot one, so that's ah. uh, um, <laughs> that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there. I had I I'll I'll hold off on my other picks, but yeah. Oh man, I don't mind Red Dead. I also think that they took the Western iconography, gave it a glow up. Oh I don't yeah. mean just by the sunsets. They gave it a glow up. Like right. that's one I'd show Siskel and Ebert to be like, listen, y'all say that video games aren't art here yep yep take That's that boomer like, reviews oh, that was one of the ones i was leaning for my number one because it's just such a freaking beautiful game there's times i've literally played it <laughs> and just sat my character down and watched the sky with <laughs> the sunsets and stuff it's like well, i'm I can't... just gonna fish for two hours so i can watch right the sky. and how many times i've fallen asleep playing that game i used to have a uh, beanbag chair that i would sit in front of playing red dead and It'd just be riding the horse forever and yes. ever and ever. That I'd be like, oh gosh, I just fell asleep. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> relaxing, and you know, you can just caught, get caught up in the environment. It's a great game. So, so what's interesting too is even all the lighting. Even and this is kind of why I was gonna rank it up in the one is because even pay attention to the minor details on the horses and. Uh, the way the light moves on them and their muscle structure, like, they're pretty accurate on just the muscle structure alone on the horses. A buddy of mine pointed out that uh, if, if you look at a male horse and the different temperatures, things shift around. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm like, that's a little well, weird that they put that much detail. So. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly we see that CGP did an upspike on search engine results for Red Dead Redemption 2. I didn't know we were that good to change the Google Analytics, but apparently we are. Just kidding. Number one. Okay, Ian, you've got the solemn responsibility. Oh, Our no. list goes Katamari, Ocarina, Okami, Red Dead uh. Redemption 2. So here's the worst part. You have to pick a game that is better than all of those. I know. In a pretty sense. No, and art is subjective, so you can justify it, bro. You can justify it. Uh, all right, so for me, I was leaning towards Skyrim and Red Dead 2 for my, uh, what I would slotted one and two. So... May, may I propose also, if we're talking Skyrim, because Tom and I mentioned this, there's nothing cooler than seeing the Erd tree in the distance in Elden Ring. Like, there is something really pretty about that. I have played Elden Ring. I've got to play that Ooh. one. Oh. Uh, all right. Okay. So it's your slot, though. It's your games? slot. Does it have to be video games, or can I, like, pick a, a like, a tabletop? Uh, tabletop's Ooh. a whole other conversation. <laughs> I can just throw Magic the Gathering out there with all the amazing artists on it and just, you, boom! You cannot, you cannot pick any Richard Kane Ferguson or Therese Nielsen <laughs> cards here. I'm sorry. Video <laughs> game, sir. Video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I got you. Um, I haven't played it, but I heard Ghost of Tsushima was pretty Ooh. good, and people argued that it was even prettier than Red Dead Two. Um, I haven't had a chance to see it, so I really 
don't know if I feel comfortable on that, so I'd let you guys weigh in on it. But if I actually had to go, just because it's the most recent one I've played, so far everything I've seen in Baldur's Gate 3 is pretty cool. And I like the fact that, I mean, if we're talking a pretty game, right? Um, I like, I'm a big D&D, so I like a lot of the aesthetic. And I actually made a bard character and named him Dio. After Ronnie, <laughs> Dio. Holy Diver uh, himself. <laughs> so I named him Dio, but I gave him like the make a half elf, and then like the the thing I like about it is you can kind of give him different color hair, so he's kind of got this like pink and orange, reddish ombre. So I'm thinking just the way you can design the characters, but then some of those cutscenes are pretty nice, uh, and it does have a little bit of advantage when you're thinking um against red dead 2 because it's newer and it's on a computer and we all sure. know that computer graphics can be way nicer especially if you have like a good processor so i mean from what i've seen i i guess i can i can comfortably lean into bg3 over red dead 2. not a bad pick i i think that i think the character animations in Baldur Baldur's gate 3 like honestly, the internet right now is absolutely wild about some of those character designs. Asterion mm -hmm. or Gale. I mean, dare I even say Carlock without the entire Twitter sphere going wild. I think <laughs> any of those are literally the reasonable. hottest character in the game, pun intended. Woof. <laughs> There's always a woof in every podcast. <laughs> it's true. That was a woofer though. And I, I do believe that this game does have the distinction of being the horniest video game ever made. And that's what people are telling us. Oh, so. that's funny. I mean, I did get hit on by Hysterion in two different versions. So I was like, yeah, that's okay. I think Tom is updating his games he needs to play list right now. I actually, okay. I may or may not have been looking how much it is to, to buy Baldur Gate 3. And then I was also... I was also looking at how big of a file it is so I could download it this evening to play. So, <laughs> if we're being honest, and Corey's looking at me through the camera, so everyone listening, you have an idea what just happened. Um, you could probably tell I'm typing, and I looked up Baldur's Gate 3, 69.99, and I'm looking at the file size to see if I can download it to play it tonight. And the show will then be canceled. Sorry. I mean, Look. Without, without giving a ton of spoilers, and at this point, if you haven't at least seen the intro, then you deserve it to be spoiled. Those dragons attacking the ship were pretty freaking cool, and there's a couple other scenes where some dragons come in that I've seen, and I'm like, man, this... I, and I haven't gotten super far, but, like, when Granny ripped out my eyeball, that was pretty freaking rad i'm not gonna lie and then the new eye she sticks in your head like <laughs> there's there's some cool stuff and i think the the character adaptability and just even the backgrounds they're aesthetically pretty it's not when you can just sit and watch for like two hours like a sunset in red dead but i think overall the artistic quality and the, just the different areas and realms and i've already traveled a little bit in the underdark like there's it's really well designed, and they had so much cool mm. stuff to pull from when you look at the world of D and D. So, yeah, uh, I will not disagree with this pick, and I think if that's the way that we close out the list, it would definitely help out the analytics because Baldur's Gate Three is hot fire right now for sure. <laughs> so, Ian, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, I would love for you to give a chance out loud, remind us what your Twitch handle is, where they can find you what conventions you're going to this year. Give our audience a little bit of a, hey, let's follow you. Yeah, so uh, the next big, at least game, I do a lot of art shows, but the next big uh, con is gonna be Origins in June. Uh, for all the gamers out there that love that, that's more tabletop, but it's still gonna be a ton of fun. And I have an exclusive invitation show that I got invited to in Dallas that I got a piece going to in that but if you want to find me on the socials and keep up with all that kind of stuff because there's always a lot going on it's just Ian Moss Creative and pretty much all the socials I'm not really active on X but it'll be on uh, Twitch Instagram Facebook are my main ones and then uh, TikTok every once in a while when I'm feeling frisky <laughs> frisky like Ian Malcolm with half shirt on oh yeah yeah, yeah I was gonna say uh, we might have to define what frisky is. I don't know. 
<laughs> really, it's a, just a little more energy to put into one more platform is all. <laughs> no, you do risky great to stuff, me though. as I it's dangerous yeah. to go alone and take this. <laughs> right. No, but yeah, you guys should definitely check out Ian on socials. He's always putting out new content. His reels are great. Art's always out there. It's it's really cool stuff. And Ian, honestly, it's been we we didn't know each other before the show, right before CGC, and Ian and I have been kind of just having fun getting to know each other. This is what we're all about here, right? I mean, this yeah. is how everyone gets to know and work with each other and build great friend, friendships and relationships. So he's doing really cool stuff, guys. So you got to make sure you please check him out. Thanks, y'all. And I'm, of course, going to plug CGC since we're here anyways. And that's honestly one of the favorite shows I do. So I'm I'm thrilled to be coming back for a third year. And I thank you guys. That I've been Jeez, what a suck up. Must want a nice booth or something. <laughs> Well, Tom, we got our top five list. Very respectable, if I might say, but man, what was all that stuff with Ian Malcolm? That was wild. That was a little different. It was very visual storytelling. That's all I'm going to say. Considering that we are an audio-only podcast, that might have been the most illustrative episode that we have done thus far. Uh, yeah. I... I got nothing. It was so bad. <laughs> bad like uh like bad dudes power, right? you bad no, enough like to glove save the bad. president <laughs> power like, glove bad it's so bad well let's go on to our listeners what character would you have tom jenkins commissioned as would you go with sephiroth with the long hair maybe the open shirted ian malcolm or maybe you want to go with something else like modern day Aang from Avatar. Who knows? You tell us in the comments. That's all the places on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Cleveland Gaming Classic. Visit the website as well, gamecleveland.com, and pick up those tickets today because the show is going to be a great one this year. We're very excited to bring it to you, and we're excited to celebrate all that's great in video gaming. What do you think, Corey? Do we hit save on this file for now? Let's even write down the password as well. This brings us to the end of this episode of the Cleveland Gaming Podcast. My name is Corey. And this is Tom. And you should also know how long it takes us to practice to make sure we get that right. It's a non-zero amount of time. And this <laughs> has been the Cleveland Gaming Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Cleveland Gaming Podcast. Powering down. down.